Welcome back to Fat Fridays here on One Comic Book a Day, where my apartment smells like musty peanut butter for some reason. I can't put my finger on it. Today we are covering Detective Comics number 42, The Case of the Prophetic Portraits, a constant issue of Batman. The Detective Comics series has sort of kind of figured out what it wants to be as they have been turned into like murder mysteries, like classic structural murder mysteries every issue now. Like, it's the same beats. We sort of introduce the characters, all the possible suspects, giving us motive. The motive is where we start hitting the little stumbling blocks. And we eventually go through some sort of killer that Batman will unmask by the end of the story. We don't really get a parlor scene, unfortunately. We just don't have the time. That's constantly the big problem about these stories. If they're just going to be 14-page solo stories. So Bruce has been invited to a party at Wiley's mansion. Mr. Wiley is this big, rich sort of devotee to the arts. He donates a lot of money to make poor artists rich and famous so he can make money off of them. He has this new artist who's sort of a thing, and he plans to make him rich by making him do portrait paintings, which Wiley admits is not his particular favorite of this artist. He likes his outdoor scenes. But this is a quick way to get him famous and rich. So Wiley paints a bunch of people. We do actually meet a bunch of potential suspects in that scene, but... A lot of them don't come up really again. They're mentioned, but they don't really show up again. One of them is not even given motive until like halfway through the comic where he mentions that he fired him. It's one of the problems if you're just going to tell these stories in 14 pages. Probably would have done better as a two-part story. There's also something very Scooby-Doo about all this. So this is the interesting concept of this comic. He paints a famous rich person. The night of, someone does something to the paintings, like stabs it, or throws a dart at it, or shoots it. One has a noose. And then that person dies the next day, the exact same way that the painting has been damaged. Of course, there's several suspects, but no one really does anything about it. One guy seems pretty much brave enough to just go out in the ocean to be left alone by his killer, because he doesn't believe the cops can help him at all. Batman takes Robin to go watch him on the yacht. Because once again, Batman's too busy doing something else. And this time it's sort of said that he's out trying to solve the crime, but he doesn't accomplish anything. Robin does actually do well enough to stop the killer. And I'm actually really into this killer design. Yeah, it's very Scooby-Doo. It's like this green hands and green skeleton mask. Well, skeleton face with a beret and sort of like a painting smock sometimes. The colors go off every so often, but it's kind of this ghoulish, and I just love the design. I kind of wish he had a name, like the Death Painter or Artist of Death. I mean, I'm just workshopping here. We could have come up with something better, but he doesn't really have a name. Robin stops him from killing the rich guy, but the killer gets away. Batman is left with no other choice but to do what you expect him to do in this situation. He has his own portrait painted. By the way, we sort of get to understand what Bruce Wayne's personality is in the Golden Age, or early Golden Age. Bruce Wayne will eventually become sort of like a lout. You know, this like rich party boy who's out all the time with really gorgeous women doing whatever he wants. But this Bruce Wayne is described by others as constantly being bored and like the laziest man on earth, though. You try to stay awake all day when you spend all night trying to stop the Joker from blowing up a hospital or something. So I would describe this Bruce Wayne more as a bore than a lout, if you get the distinction. So Bruce gets his painting done, and he leaves the painting up overnight where it gets shot several times. Somehow, in the house with Batman and Robin, someone snuck in and shot the painting without them noticing multiple times. Remember, Alfred doesn't exist yet, so there was no Alfred to possibly hear this either. That seems like a pretty big mistake by Batman. You would think Batman would never let that happen. The only person who generally is able to sneak into the mansion easily and get out without him knowing is Catwoman. Oh god, Catwoman did this? No, no she didn't. So later that night, the killer comes in to shoot Bruce Wayne, who's sitting at a chair. If you haven't already figured out what's happening here, it's a fake Bruce Wayne, kind of like how Sherlock Holmes used that fake body double in the story after he comes back with the sniper. The Empty House? I think it's called The Empty House. And as soon as he shoots the fake Bruce Wayne, Batman runs in and starts beating the crap out of him. Who is it? Why, it's Mr. Wily himself. And at this point, it could only be Mr. Wily because he's the only one not introduced as a suspect. But also, it's told to us in the middle when they go to the police that he survived an attack, which 
we don't see, and also he's the only person to survive without the help of Batman and Robin. It only makes sense that he ends up being the killer. And yeah, he explains that he thought this way it would make the paintings worth more quickly. And he could just kind of get rid of it and make all the money himself. Instead of letting Batman turn him in, he shoots and kills himself. Which, once again, Batman probably should have easily stopped that. These characters, this golden age, Superman and Batman, just can't seem to stop the bad guys from dying. But he doesn't seem too bothered about that. Turns the fact that this guy just killed himself in Wayne Manor. Going to be a lot of weird questions from Commissioner Gordon. But yeah, that's the Batman story. And I, I actually like these structures. It's just there is no time for them. And yeah, it's a detective comic and it should be a detective story. But like, try something new and give these villains some names. I just, I just want a story told in more than one issue. Because then they could accomplish what they seem to really want to accomplish. But no one seems to understand that structure yet. Not completely. And that is it from Detective Comics number 42, The Case of the Prophetic Portraits. How do I keep almost screwing up that title? If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Hit the bell icon to get notifications when a new video goes up. I do this Monday through Friday, but Mondays and Thursdays I cover a Superman story in either Action Comics or the main Superman series. And please join me next time. Same bat day, same comic book channel. Have a great day.